So let's say that you've finished a wooden subwoofer or speaker enclosure, but you don't have expensive spray equipment. How can we give our subwoofer box a durable, tough texture coating by using only a roll? What about the backside of beauty panels? Is there a better way to protect these surfaces and give them a finished look? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Duratex texture coating. How easy is it to use this stuff and how tough is it in its final form? Let's test this stuff out and find Find out by coding this custom speaker box. What's going on guys? Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, I do car audio reviews and tutorials and lessons, and of course, build log videos. An important step during any build is to determine how you actually want to finish your project. Now I first found out about Acrotech and this product here, Duratex, about a year ago when I was doing a search online for durable coatings for speaker enclosures. I purchased some to try out, and I gotta tell you guys, I really like this stuff. I reached out to Acrotech and they were cool enough to send over a bunch of different samples of this material and sponsor this video so that I can show you guys this coating. So let's jump back in time before this box was coated and see how we use this stuff. So here we have a subwoofer box that I'm currently working on making. And this box is actually a down firing style box. You can see the subwoofer would mount there. It would then sit like this in the vehicle and it would sit in an under seat location. Now, since this box will be located in an under seat area, it's gonna be exposed to shoes and feet, potentially kicking it and damaging it. So I wanna give it a really tough resistant surface. I figured this is the perfect opportunity to show this coating. And I'm actually going to try coating this in white and the rest will be coated in black just to give it a little bit of an accent. Now, what is Duratex? Duratex is a high performance protective coating that when you compare it to some of the other options, this has a ton of advantages. First off, Duratex has great adhesion properties. It adheres to wood really, really well. I know that people are likely gonna compare this to bed liner. So what you have to remember is that bed liner sometimes has a tendency to actually separate from wood if it's sprayed on wood and only adhere to itself. Also keep in mind that bed liner requires very expensive spray equipment and is typically solvent based. And in this case, Duratex is water based and it can be applied by hand with these style of rollers. Being able to apply it with these rollers makes it a great solution for smaller shops or for a do-it-yourselfer. And it's nice because you don't have to spend a ton of time masking off different parts of the project because you can actually control where it goes with the hand roller. Now you can see here that Duratex comes in both black and white and they also offer an option to custom tint the color. It comes in a wide variety of sizes, a gallon, a quart, a pint, and something else that's really cool about this is you have to remember it's a coating. Since it's a coating, we don't have to plan areas for seams on our enclosure. As you can imagine, if we were trying to wrap this in vinyl or carpet, we have to plan for spots like right here. How are, how are we gonna transition from this side to this side with one continuous piece of material? How are we gonna get it into that corner and make it look good? When we're coating something, it definitely simplifies the process. So what do we need in order to use the Duratex to coat our our project. We of course need the Duratex itself. We'll use one of these textured rollers and Duratex sells these in a variety of different sizes. So if you were doing a big cabinet, you could use this to apply it much more quickly. Or if you needed to do small detail work, you could use this one. It's also a good idea to have a brush on hand to work into the corners. Sometimes using these rollers, it's hard to get into a tight corner like on the project I'll be doing. So we can use a brush to dab it into that corner. We'll wanna have some paint trays. You can get these at the hardware store. I also find that it's handy to have these painter's pyramids or painter's triangles. These are so that we can set the project on top of it while we're working on it. So we can coat one side, let it dry enough that we can touch it and then flip it over, set it on the pyramids and continue to coat the bottom. And then it's worth noting that this product does not really give off much of an offensive odor, but nevertheless, it's still recommended that you wear a respirator. Finally, we want really good lighting so that we can see our project really well. We wanna work in a well-ventilated area, and it's always a good idea to protect your work surface. Now, I've already 
already done this off camera. You wanna make sure that there's not any wax or any other type of coating on the surface. And you also wanna make sure that it's wiped clean of the dust. Now this coating does build up to a thickness pretty easily. So it is okay to have some minor imperfections, but if you can get rid of them, it's a good idea to do so. A good way to fill any nail holes or any pin holes is just to fill them up with body filler. This here looks like a crack, but it's actually filled up with wood glue and sanded smooth. So we should be good to go. Now, if there are any areas to mask off, let's say you had some T-nuts inside this for attaching the subwoofer, you can mask those off or you can mask off the inside here. But like I said earlier, it's pretty easy to control where this material actually goes. So I'm not even gonna bother with masking any of this off. So first off, we wanna stir our material and we can then pour it into our painter's tray. The first coat we're going to be applying is a protective coat. We will start with applying the Duratex to the bottom surface of our product Project so that we can allow it to dry and then we'll be able to flip it over once it's dry and coat the rest of the project. The goal here with this initial protective coat is we wanna get 100% coverage as this coat creates the initial moisture resistance layer. We'll allow some time for the Duratex to dry. At the point that the Duratex is dry to the touch, we're going to double check for 100% coverage. If the project's going to be used in an application where the part will be exposed to the outdoor elements, this is the time to apply a second protective coat. Once the protective coats are dry to the touch, we will do what's called our texture coat. This is called the texture coat because the way we apply this coat controls the final look of the project. If we put on a thin coat where we don't really load up the roller with much material, like what I'm doing here, the coating will have a texture, but it will be much less aggressive than if we were to really load up the roll and apply a heavy final texture coat. Once we've made a texture that we're satisfied with, we can move on to curing. Now, since this is a water-based product, the less humid the air is, the faster it's going to dry. It will be dry to the touch in a few hours, but may have a soft feel. For the Duratex to fully cure usually takes about five days, and there's ways to reduce that time as detailed and Acrotex instructions for the coating. Since I had a little bit of extra Duratex left in the tray, I decided to coat a couple other projects that I have around the shop. I wanted to coat the back side of these beauty panels to give them a little bit more of a finished look. When all was said and done, I had several projects that I had completed. So here we have it, the finished subwoofer box project. Now, while we take a closer look at the finished results, I gotta say, I'm really happy with this coating. Like I said, before I even reached out to these guys, this is something I've been using for a while now and I've really enjoyed it. It's easy to apply, super simple for a do-it-yourselfer that doesn't have expensive spray grade equipment. With that said, Acrotech does offer a sprayable version of the Duratex. So if you are a shop that does have spray equipment, you have the ability to use it to spray a much larger area more quickly and effectively. Something else that I've noticed about the Duratex is I feel like a little bit really goes a long ways. In fact, these smaller pint sample kits are enough to do 10 to 12 square feet of coverage. Now, Acrotech does make some other coating products. They actually sent me this Acoustex as well to try, so I'll try this in the future. And this is to help reduce resonance and vibrations within the enclosure. You could actually apply this inside of the box. So if you wanna give Duratex a try on your next project, or if you wanna check out some of the other coatings that Acrotech offers, you can check out the links to that down in the video description. If you'd like to check out some of my other videos, you can do so here on screen. And in the meantime, guys, don't forget to design, build, and install. Thanks for watching.